Hello everyone to the Lefty Knitter podcast channel. We are going to be doing a cranking video today. I have my 48 stitch cylinder in my Erlbacher Speedster. I have some unknown yarn and I already cranked the first one of these. It's not fully finished. I have to do the finishing on it, but I'm going to show you guys kind of what it looks like. So I, uh, my 48 stitch, I took out every third needle because we're going to do kind of a mock rib. Well, it is a mock rib. Start some flat knitting for a thumb hole and finish. Okay, so it's not much to look at, not much to look at, right? But I also used Lycra in this. Um, my father-in-law gets really cold hands and feet and he really um, has been wearing the crap out of the little fingerless gloves I made. So goes from here to here, then there's the flat thumb hole, and then it goes way up past my fingers. It probably won't go past his, but he could also fold it down if he wanted to. So I left long tails so I can do um, a bind off with the yarn, okay? That's what I did there. All right, let me um, adjust the camera, and we'll be right back. So I've already adjusted the camera here and I've taken out every third needle, like I said. So we're only working with whatever one, two thirds of 48 is. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, don't have the number for you. I have my carrier over here near needle number one and I'm gonna start hanging my bonnet. It was interesting to figure out a rhythm for the bonnet, but I figured it out. So I did the first needle and then the next ring I did on the next set of two, then I skipped one. Then I did one and two and skipped a ring. One, two, skipped a ring. I mean, you can figure this out. It's just trying to make sure they stretch across all your needles kind of evenly. All right, these are getting too far down in the cylinder. This is already pretty far over there. We'll hang the rest of these. Well, I can hang one more right there. Nope, I gotta skip one, skip one. There we go, okay. It gets a little tight if you don't do the skip one every, you know, third ring or whatever. Kind of like if you were every third needle there. All right, since I am using ripcord to take this off, I need to have waste yarn on both sides of my project because I'm leaving live stitches so I can do a some sort of bind off after the fact, a sewn bind off or a crochet bind off. I'm not quite sure. A back stitch bind off. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing yet. So I have to use two things of waste yarn with ripcord in beneath, in between, because I use ripcord, which is just fishing line that is a 65 pound strength fishing line that I purchased on Amazon. All right, so we're gonna crank around to about here so I can hang the rest there. Okay. I have the weight just held with my knees. Not everybody can do that. You can take it off if you need to. All right. We just need to hang four more. So this is just waste yarn. Now the, the waste yarn looks really holy, but the yarn I'm using is unknown. It's probably close to a DK. I thought it was some unmarked Patton's Croy in a solid color, but I'm not sure if that's what it is. So I just know it's too thick to run with uh, fingering, uh, like a fingering, so it's better on my 48. Pull my tail in here. I'm gonna add one row of ripcord, because this orange will come off at the end with the bonnet. So one row of the fishing line or ripcord. They probably make actual ripcord for, I know they do for um, flatbed knitting machines, so you can probably use the same stuff in this I, I don't know one row exactly starting on the first needle ending on the last one to close there let it close a little far but that's okay now one more ball of waste yarn let me try to get one out of here because I have a bunch of them just in a basket behind my machine um, I also found out recently that I can make socks for my father-in-law. I used my 80 stitch cylinder and it worked out really well. And I was told he needs a few more pair because my mother-in-law is constantly washing them because he wears them almost every night. 
which is great. He, um, yeah, he wears them at night with slippers and then goes to bed a little. It's a long piece of waste. Well, when you're using the smaller cylinder and every other needle out, it's definitely, um, your waste yarn goes a lot further. But that is okay. All right, last needle to close right there. Pull it in. Now we're gonna, when we thread this sock yarn or the yarn, our project yarn, in, we wanna leave a long tail. We wanna leave a long enough tail to do whatever kind of bind off you're gonna do. So, that's a decent amount in there. Now if I messed up, you could just use another yarn for your bind off. It's okay. I also use Lycra, so let's reset the counter because I do have numbers that I wrote down. This is my Lycra, I'm just using white. And I have the bar from CSM Supplies. It is, uh, I guess I could show you real quick. Let me thread it in. All right, so let's take this off so I can show you. There's my Lycra. And here's my extension bar for the Lycra and has a rubber uh, grommet type thing, whatever that is, rubber something. It goes in there and then it goes straight to your mast, okay? You don't have to thread it through all, just go straight to your mast from here. The rubber helps um, slow it down because if not, you see how kinky it gets, all right? Let me put you back in here without being... All right, good, we're good. Okay, now I'm just gonna thread it into my mast and and then into my carrier. Okay, so that's in and we are gonna be ready to start. So we're doing, I did 28 rows before I started flat knitting. I kind of hold these tails, the first row or two. If you have the clips and the weights, you can do that too. Oops, that one did not knit. I almost didn't catch it in time. So I'm just pulling the needle out a little bit to catch the stitch underneath of the one that didn't knit and then pulled it over top. This yarn, like I said, even with the tension I'm at, it um, has been a little finicky. I probably should have been going slower. I went slower when I did my first one. All right, let's hope I don't have to change yarns in the middle of flat knitting. I mean, if I have to, I have to. I'm gonna move my weight up because it's getting very close to the ground. Not that close, but close enough that I would rather not have to move it later. All right, because you wanna have all the proper tension. So to do uh, flat knitting, you're gonna be lifting up, since we're going this direction, you're gonna lift up needles here and crank around. All right, so, um, I noticed it is easier when I have my tool because this, this yarn's a little tight. Okay, so flat knitting. Now, some people would say to put your heel spring on for the flat knitting. Now they all have to click, so those ones fully finish. I'm not putting my heel spring on. I'm just gonna tension, I'm gonna pull the yarn, but further up so you won't see my hand, but I'm gonna tension it when we get around, okay? So because when we're going this way, the heel spring's not on, your yarn isn't gonna be tight. So you need to tension it with your hands and then you can go back the other way, stopping at the front. Okay, you have to put these needles back down and then you're gonna lift the other side. So you have to pick a point somewhere where you're gonna stop. All right, sorry. We're gonna lift. I lift one for extra measure. But then you're gonna crank around and then that's where your flat knitting is going to be. They, they clicked. I'm tensioning the yarn. I'm cranking back around to the front. Pushing needles back down. And I did this until I got to 50 rows. I didn't reset my counter and count that way. I just marked down when I stopped doing the flat knitting. One more for extra measure. Crank around. Make sure they all click. Tension with your hand. 
go around again, stopping at the front. My lycra is really bunched up. We're going to fix that. I just pulled it down near the bobbin. Okay. Two, 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 and one. I just got to get a little further. Crank around to the back until they all click. They all clicked. And then you can go backwards, tensioning with your hand to the yarn so it doesn't um, bunch up and not knit for you. If you did that with the heel spring on, it would change the, he the tension here and here for all the flat rows, and it would kind of look funny. So unless you cranked the whole thing with the heel spring on, which I couldn't do with this yarn, I tried it, and it really just didn't like the tension, and I didn't want to mess with my knob too much more, so I just decided no heel spring for the whole project and just tension it. Crank around, hand tension it. Eventually, we're going to put some weights in here to pull that down. Grab my tool. This is the crescent tool. Okay. And you're just going to do this until you feel like the opening is big enough. And it is deceiving because the weight pulling down on it makes it look like it's a bigger hole, but it really isn't. So you, I always say do a little bit more be, because it's very deceiving. Down. Up. Oops. Up. That one was kind of under the V cam still. Crank around till it doesn't click anymore. Hold the yarn, tension it up. Okay. We're at 44. I said we're going to 50. Let's put a weights in. So I'm gonna put my weights here. So it pulls that. And I'm going to put one on the other side. So it also pulls those. Okay. So we can keep going. Crank around till it clicks. Tension your yarn. It gets a little tight because the extra weight on them. Click, hand tension, back around to the front. This is 48, so we're gonna do one more. Use the tool, you can get holes in your fingers. These things can be very sharp. Hand tension, crank around. not sure if I either way it says 50 now I thought I was on 50 on the pass that I was going to go back in the round but that's okay it'll be close enough and then tension it come to the front some people do stuff here to manipulate to close up the hole I'm not going to um, I think what people do I can't fully remember but you can like pull that across. I don't have a needle here, so I didn't want to pull it too far, so I just didn't, but I think people do that. All my needles are back at, down into work, and I'm going to crank until 80. I'm going to have to change yarns, though, because I'm running out, so we'll, we'll see when we get there. I'm very close to not having any more yarn left, so let's be ready to change yarns. I will probably, um, I'm not going to do the faux Russian join. I think what I'm going to do here is pull it in and hand knit it in. So I'm going to pull it in without trying to pull too much of the lycra in with it. 
Pull my Lycra back tight. All right, so it's gonna knit on both of these needles, but I'm also gonna overlap. Gosh, I hope I have enough yarn. We're gonna find out. I do this a lot where I'm not sure if I, I use a lot of scraps. I like trying to use up everything I have. So that is why. Okay, so I'm gonna go and this stitch will also knit across two, hopefully. <laughs> we're at 69 stitches, so let's uh, keep going. We're, we're so close. If I don't get to 80, I'm just gonna stop so I have enough yarn to do a, a back stitch bind off. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll just add in something else. All right, I'm at 76. I think I can do one more row and then pull in to have enough. So I'm close enough, I'm at 77. I'm not gonna cry about it. Um, could I get one more row and do a back? Let's do one more row. If I have to use a different color for a bind off, I'll do that. All right, we're at 80, the last one, or we're at 78, the last one closed. I'm gonna be cutting the Lycra because I don't want I don't, I don't need all that lycra, okay? So we're gonna cut that. I'm gonna take that off the machine so it comes out and isn't attached and it's very sticky, it sticks to everything. All right, so I have decent amount of yarn left to pull into my machine. I'm so glad I've used this up, this makes me happy. I, I am very much, I try to use everything on my cones. That will free up two of my cones, that's exciting. And then, um, I make a lot of like mix, mix matchy type stuff. All right, we're gonna use white again because white is a good contrast for this. All right, you need to have the live stitches because you gotta have something to hold them so you can do a bind off later, okay? I just hold the tails the first one or two passes. See my little ball? My little ball is to get like this, and then I have to like... That's why I'm constantly stopping, because it's not flowing off of a cone. If you've noticed in any of my videos. All right, I'm gonna stop at that last one, pull this in. I gotta remember I have some heel weights in there. I don't want them to drop too. Let's actually take them off. I'm gonna hold my project underneath. Take it off. Take my weight off and we will show you guys. Sorry the first one wasn't a fully finished um, object, but it shows you what I was doing with the long tails. So let's lift up. All right, we have the bonnet, we have waist yarn, we have the rip cord, we have more waist yarn. Then we have our project and our waist yarn. So let's take off this, I'm trying to find an end. There's an end. Just pull one of the legs, just out like that. This will come off and then you're good to go. You have all your tail to fasten off the top or bottom, whatever that's gonna be. Like, I don't know how my father-in-law might wanna wear these. So it's really totally up to him. I think this is a great quick project. Um, I know they're not the most stylish or refined, but, um, for him just wearing them at night, watching TV and stuff, they're great. They're gonna be wonderful and he's gonna love them. So, all right, until the next video, y'all, happy cranking, bye.